This episode of Film Ride is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Ride, we play with lenses and go to class with Alex Buono. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques. Going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And recently, thanks to my friends at Lens Pro to go, I was able to get my hands on these new zine lenses that everyone has been talking about. And I was also able to attend the Visual Storytelling 2 tour with Alex Buono that I've been telling you guys about recently. So today, we will be taking a look at both those things because we can. And here we have these new zine lenses. Right now they've only released a 24, 50, and 85 millimeter. Not much variety to the set currently, but a good starting point with the promise of more choices coming very soon. Now these are true cinema lenses in the build. Aluminum housing, long focus throw, meaning the action of turning the focus ring is much greater than of a photography lens. It makes it a million times easier to pull focus when you have a focus puller, but not so much if you're pulling focus yourself. Of course we have the manual focus and iris rings and unified front diameter across all the lenses. A lot of people are calling these rehousing of broken on lenses but according to a B&H review the manufacturer has said that the elements and groupings are the same but the zine lenses are ground polished and coated using a different process so there you have that. I wasn't able to do any comparisons with the Rokinon lenses. I would be interested in that, but off the bat, the image quality does seem better with the Zine lenses, and the build is a million times better. These lenses feel very durable, whereas although the Rokinons are great low-cost lenses, they definitely feel cheaper and delicate, which is not always the best thing in the field. The lenses are also super fast with a T-stop of 1.5, so great for very shallow depth of field and low-light shooting, and I was really digging the quality I was getting from them. I like shooting with them just as much as my Canon Cinema Primes, which are some of my favorite lenses. They felt really good to shoot with and the image quality was really good as well. Now what really interests me about these lenses is that they are almost half the price of the Canon Cinema Primes and Zeiss CP2s which is in the same category that these lenses want to live in. So I also grabbed a CP2 and C and E lens to put them side by side. So let's go through these three shots which are the same setup but each one on a different lens. We have shot A, shot B, and shot to see. Of course, this is compressed for the web, but honestly, that's where most of our content is living nowadays anyway, so this is still a good comparison. And then another angle, shot A, B, and C, then side by side. For me, I'm seeing a difference in the lenses, but the difference is in character, not quality, which that is more of a subjective opinion for me. And to slap labels on them, A is Zeiss, B Canon, and C is the Zine. The Canon was a bit brighter at the same T-stop than the other, so I had to try to adjust for that, but overall I'm really digging the slightly warmer tone I'm getting from the Canon lens than the other two. Of course this is not some super scientific test, but you can see just by looking at these that the Zine holds up nicely to its more expensive counterparts. Out of all three, I still do prefer the Canon Cinema Primes most. I really love these lenses for the overall look and construction, but if you are looking to get yourself some proper cinema lenses and need to save on budget, these are really great at almost half the cost. You can also save on rental cost by going with these as well. On Lens Pro site, the equivalent Canon lenses are over $200 for a four-day rental, whereas these are just $140, which as you know, every little bit counts when you're budgeting a low-budget project. As always, Zine, Rokinon, or their parent company had nothing to do with this episode. I'm not in contact with them. These lenses were supplied to us by Lens Pro, and if you would like to try these lenses out for yourself, Lens Pro has hooked us up with a 10% off coupon code, so use the coupon code FilmRiotZine if you're wanting to give these a go. That code will work until December 30th. First. And a random side note, while moving from my air-conditioned house to my hot backyard, my lenses fogged out, of course, as they always do, but I decided to shoot anyway to see what would happen, got some interesting results. It created an odd in-camera effect, sort of a dreamy, grim vibe that I'm definitely going to try to recreate later on, and it was just a reminder to me that there's always little simple things that we can do to create all sorts of interesting effects to help invoke mood. But now, some bill paying. Domain.com is where I get all my domains, and now they got .club. .club is universal and understood globally, and not just in the US. It's perfect if you're building a new business site or naming your film startup, because if you think about it, any business, any idea, it's a club. Internet's all about community and collaboration, which makes .club perfect. Go to domain.com slash club to register your .club domain name. They're only $9.99 a year. $9.99. I... You're doing so good, buddy. Keep it going. I was, you're until he so stopped me. me. And thousands of options. Of, of great options are still available. See, you had to... I'd keep going. It's still good.
It's still good. We can save Use this. the coupon code. For, uh, didn't need saving. Take, <laughs> the, <laughs> la take the lifeboat. Use, use the coupon code FilmRide to get 20% off. I can't. I'm sorry. To get 25% off your order, lets them know that you heard it from us, gets you money savings. When you think domain names, think, think domain.com. You know, it was going really well until you opened your mouth. Logo. So last week, I had the chance to attend Alex Buono's Visual Storytelling 2 class. He did a tour in 2013 that was excellent, and this one didn't disappoint either. The whole class started out with a little bit of gear talk, but then for the rest of the class, gear was in there, but really took a backseat to ideas and techniques, which I loved. First thing he discussed was how he pulled off the opening titles for SNL, giving away all the tricks they used there. Then Alex moved into demos, which covered how he nails the style of spoofs they do on SNL, like the Maze Runner spoof. First he showed the piece, then talked about what went into the things to consider, like lens choice, light, color, camera movement, and editing to create that style. He covered how he broke down the script, created a shot list and overhead diagram for one of the scenes from that piece. Then did a live demonstration where he recreated that setup for the scene showing how he got the look mostly in camera and created a fire flicker effect. After that, he jumped into a talk and demonstration of how to handle mixed colored lighting situations, then into other breakdowns of things like music videos, commercials, and documentaries, jumping from one thing to the other, quickly displaying how, with mostly the same tools, these different techniques were giving radically different results. And what I really loved about all of that was how honest he was with it all. He seemed to have no problem giving out all the secret sauce that makes up what he does. So as I said before, this class really is like a one day mentorship with Alex. He even has a talk towards the end where he covers the biggest mistakes that he made in his career, which was surprisingly candid and insightful. Also hilarious. After that, Alex covered color correction and grading by giving a live demo where he corrected a scene from his current show, Documentary Now. He showed the basics of correction and how to use scopes. Finally, to close the class out, he gave his talk on visual subtext, diving into several films, discussing the symbolism that exists in them and how you can use that to enrich your own project, which I've talked about that plenty on the show. It's a big thing for me. I always want to add things beneath the surface to all the stories I tell, so hearing Alex's perspective on that topic was really great. And I know I'm gushing all over this like I was paid to do it, but I'm not. I just really dug it that much. So if you have time and the cash for it, I could not recommend this enough. Definitely go here to see what dates are left in the tour and get all the rest of the details. Logo. But that's it for today. As always, you can follow me on Twitter right here, ask a question or just say hi. And also speaking of gear, check out Lens Pro's YouTube page. The link's in the notes section. They do all kinds of first looks and other helpful things. And I'll see you guys next week when I stay alive because I know what grave the money is buried in.